Hey, welcome back. My name is Al and we have a nice, wonderful sculpt uh, created by the artist Nanobit on Instagram. And this is, I don't even know what this Pokemon is called, like a Toto Dial or something like that. If it's not the original 150, 151 Pokemon, it's not a Pokemon in my book. I know, I know that's a controversial statement, but you know, grew up with it. So all these crazy ones, I have no idea what they are. Anyways, love the art, Nanobit did awesome. So I'm sure that you've seen my previous video and if you haven't linked above, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about uh, these Z-Spheres and what I'm doing here. But in a nutshell, Z-Spheres are super, super powerful and I can kind of create this armature just to get some really quick volumes in and then I will convert it and then do all of my sculpting. If you are going for speed and your project calls for it, then Z-Spheres might be for you. I like Z-Spheres, uh, but not every time. Z-Spheres are great, but you'll see as soon as I start sculpting, um, the forms aren't really all that accurate. Like if you go ahead and look at the body, the body themselves, it's just one round ball. Now I could have broken that up into a couple more Z-Spheres, but if I were to block this out with primitive shapes, I could have nailed down some of these forms uh, far more accurately, but it would have taken a little bit more time. There are pros and there are cons to the Z-Spheres. All right, so I made it adaptive skin. I changed the Dynamest res resolution and now I can, you know, smooth out this character and really begin sculpting. Honestly, looking back, it's way too high resolution. I should have lowered that. So just pulling out some of these main forms that the Z-Spheres or that I didn't add to the Z-Spheres. I'm trying to nail down that mouth, the curvature of the mouth. Get that uh, the smile line and the eyes. What I'm gonna use is an insert mesh brush after I carve out that orbital socket and insert mesh sphere for the eyeball. And then I can use an insert mesh half sphere. And the problem with that, well, it's not a problem. What you have to do with the half sphere is Dynamesh at a high resolution and that'll actually make it solid. It's kind of like a just a shell when you drop it in there at first. And you'll see I'm using clay buildup a lot. Build up those meaty, meaty neck folds, you know, like that, that kind of stuff. And I really don't know why I didn't use uh, Alpha 6. I love Alpha 6. This would have been a great, great sculpt to use Alpha 6. So Alpha 6, if you don't know, in my clay buildup brush right now, the Alpha is this square. And it's great. It gives it a really cool sketchy feel. But Alpha 6 really just smooths things out. It's not as harsh. There's less cleanup in my opinion. So this would have been a prime example for me to use it. Don't know why I didn't. So I really love the Michelin Man legs. I think I'm thinking Michelin because everything's white right now. He's got those real chunky fat baby legs. Uh, so excellent, excellent concept, Nanobit. If you were to ever watch this, you are pretty awesome. Someday, I really want to make your uh, your Mario Sunshine art that you've created with the, the Flood backpack and all that. It looks great. So for the, f uh, not fangs, uh, what's the word? Claws, or the claws. Dropped in a sphere. Use some of those uh, deformation modifiers. And to do that in the gizmo, you hit the gear, and I went to taper, to taper that sphere, and then I can use bend curve. Pretty simple there using inflate and snake hook to pull down the fingers and beef them up a little bit. Holding down alt, uh, carve in with clay buildup. And once again, inflating just a little bit more. So from there, with insert mesh brush, I can drop them in, or I can just duplicate, move them around, get them into position. Everything's good with the world. So from here, I drop in, um, I think that's one of Shane Olson's uh, insert mesh brushes. It's basically just cylinder, but you can see what I'm doing here. This was super, super handy. So I used bend curve and was able to place all these points after I Z remeshed. And then I can literally just drag these points exactly where it needs to be. So imagine taking a sphere at the top of his head and then using snake hook just to stretch that sphere around and trying to eyeball it. It's a pain in the butt. Now there's many ways to do what I just did here, but using that bend curve, it was like a breeze and it worked awesome. So next up, we use the move brush as well as snake hook here and there to make uh, the pink spiky bits a little more spiky. Now, honestly, I'm not that smart. I'm not that intelligent of a person, so I don't know what in the world's going on. But with the move brush, if you go to your brush settings, turn on AccuCurve, it makes things pointier. Okay, I know that's not very smart sounding, but that's what it do. Makes things pointier. Using clay buildup, 
beefing up some of those forms. Notice that every time I use damn standard, I use clay buildup to beef up uh, the meat on either side of that uh, valley. All right, so at this point, if I press Z, I can go ahead and basically just eyedropper the colors that I need from the concept art itself. That's a good starting place. I go in and make some adjustments later. But right here, there is the transpose master. Now this is super, super awesome. So this character, there's the body. There's also the pink spikes, the claws on the hands and the feet and the eyeballs, all of this stuff, the eyelids, all of those are separate subtools. And what I can do here is go to transpose master, mask off the arm, the leg, the body. If I wanted to tilt the head, I could. You can see that I moved the tail to make it, uh, I don't know, more three-dimensional. It was really the design from one side. So moved all that. And what that does is it will update all the subtools. If I to transpose master and then mask the hand and then move the hand to a new pose every single sub tool on that hand goes with it so it's insanely powerful and the nice thing about that is some of you are saying well why can't you just combine everything well i could but what if i wanted sub tools which is what i wanted so now when i confirm that transpose master all my sub tools update it gets the pose that i want and then i still have sub tools super super awesome so I got that eye in there. Things are looking pretty good. I started with that move brush just moving things out and I'm like, eh, the reference has a ton. Instead of doing that by hand, what I'm gonna do is use an alpha. So I don't like to use alphas very often. And when I do, I always make sure that I go through and do some touch-ups by hand, whether it's some smoothing for some transitions, whether it's some added sculpting to help enhance. So then using the move brush, I can move out some of those larger chunks just so it reads better from a distance because I know I want to see the whole character, obviously. And when you're zoomed in, it's kind of hard to, to realize that. But be sure you zoom out on your sculpt, see what's going on. So at this point, we are almost done wrapping up some of the details in this character. I really, really enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for sticking around. You all are really awesome. I am headed to Florida tomorrow, so... Yeah, that, that's a good way to start my summer vacation. I'm a teacher by day and summer break starts uh, after tomorrow. That's where I'll be. I'll have a few more videos coming your way. So be on the lookout for those.